Colleagues from the media, together with Minister Subianto, I'm glad to warmly welcome two good friends from Australia, Foreign Minister Marie Spain and Defence Minister Peter Dutton. We have just concluded the seventh 2 plus 2 meeting. Our last 2 plus 2 meeting was held two years ago in Bali, Indonesia. Colleagues, Australia and Indonesia are comprehensive strategic partners. We are glad to see this partnership grow from strength to strength. I'm also pleased to see that this partnership works well even during this difficult time. In this regard, allow me to convey Indonesia appreciation to Australia for its continued support throughout the pandemic. Australia has delivered 1 million doses of vaccine AstraZeneca, 1,000 ventilators, 700 oxygen concentrators, 170 oxygen cylinders, rapid antigen uh, tests, and other medical supplies. Together, we are determined to overcome this pandemic and contribute toward health resilience in the region. Colleagues from the media, let me highlight a number of issues that we discussed during the 2 plus 2 meeting. First, on bilateral relations. Our discussion, among others, focused on efforts to accelerate economic recovery, especially on maximizing the benefit of Indonesia-Australia CEPA as an important tool to strengthen trade and investment cooperation between Indonesia and Australia. I am very pleased to observe that bilateral trade increased significantly in the first half of 2021, jumping from $3.52 billion in the same period last year to $5.83 billion US dollar. We also see promising new Australian investment project in Indonesia, including in the energy sector as exemplified by Fortescue Metal Group in Papua and Kalimantan. Second, on regional issue, we are committed to be part of effort to maintain peace and stability in the region. We exchange views on potential concrete cooperation programs to implement the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. We also discuss the situation in Myanmar. Indonesia and Australia are committed to contributing humanitarian assistance for the people of Myanmar. I share information that ASEAN is now on the advanced stage to delivering first batch of humanitarian assistance. Safety and security is critical in ensuring the successful delivery of such humanitarian assistance. We underline the importance of implementation of five points of consensus. And during the meeting, I repeated Indonesia's posi uh, position that access to meet all stakeholders in Myanmar is paramount important for the special envoy of ASEAN to start his job. On Afghanistan, Indonesia closely monitors the situation on the ground, including the formation of caretaker government. Indonesia continues to underline the importance of building an inclusive government in Afghanistan. Indonesia hopes that Afghanistan is not used as a breeding and training ground for terrorist organization and activities that threaten peace and stability in the region. And Indonesia also hopes that human rights, especially the rights of women and girls, are continuously respected and promoted. We also discuss Indonesia-Australia cooperation in the Pacific. I reiterated Indonesia's commitment to enhance its relation with Pacific countries, including through PIF. In this context, I appreciate very much Australia's support for the second Pacific Exposition, which will be hosted virtually by Indonesia on October and will provide opportunity for the Pacific countries to strengthen economic and people-to-people -people cooperation. 
I'm also convinced that the MOU on trilateral cooperation with Pacific countries, which Foreign Minister Pen and I sent today, provides a platform for a greater contribution to the region's economic and human development. Colleagues from the media, during the visit of Minister Payne and Minister Dutton, three other MOUs were also signed, namely MOU on countering terrorism and violent extremism, MOU on cyber cooperation and emerging cyber technology, and arrangement on defense cooperation that just signed by the two defense ministers. So colleagues, there are some of the points that I would like to highlight and now I would like to invite Minister Subianto to share his views on today's meeting before I give the floor to our Australian friends. Papa Bro, Strachan. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Retno Marsudi, uh, members of the press. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang, good afternoon. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Shalom Om Swastiastu. Uh, today I'm very proud and very happy to have the honor to co-host this annual 2 plus 2 ministers meeting uh, together with uh, Minister at NOR and uh, to welcome Minister Marisa Payne and Minister Peter Dutton uh, to this meeting. Uh, I'd like to convey to you that we had a very productive uh, meeting this morning at the Ministry of Defence with His Excellency, Minister of Defence of Australia, uh, Mr. Peter Dutton. We talked about uh, all relevant issues, uh, highlighting the strong uh, defence cooperation between Indonesia and Australia that is already in place for uh, several decades. Uh, we have a uh, good experience in the past and even up to now the relationship is very strong and uh, just now Minister Dutton and myself have signed the defense cooperation arrangement a renewal uh, which has, uh, which will be very important umbrella document for uh, a comprehensive defense cooperation in the future. And also, quite important, we have agreed uh, to work hard to upgrade this arrangement to become an agreement with a stronger uh, umbrella for defense cooperation in the framework of a strategic comprehensive partnership. And in defense cooperation, we are also um, very grateful for the assistance provided by uh, Australian Minister of Defense, the ADF also, uh, in uh, helping us with uh, assistance in the mitigation of uh, COVID-19. As you know, uh, the Indonesian uh, defense sector and the TNI, we have a significant health uh, capability, health services, 110 hospitals all over Indonesia, which we will increase next year by another 40 hospitals. And uh, we really appreciate the assistance given to us by Australia. Also, this opportunity I took to express our highest appreciation at the quick response, the assistance given by Australia and the Australian uh, Defence Forces in assisting us when we lost our submarine, KRI Nangala 402. Australia responded very fast, sending a ship to help us in our search and rescue mission. And uh, we thank you very much for this uh, response. We also um, are uh, discussing uh, Australian support and participation in our uh, peacekeeping 
uh, operations. Also, uh, Australia has uh, donated 15 armored uh, personnel carriers, the Bushmaster, and uh, we are also discussing uh, the procurement of more Bushmasters in the near future. We also discussed under the framework of the enhancement of the defense cooperation, the possibility of uh, Australia opening uh, their training areas for uh, the participation of Indonesian units to be training together with Australia in the training areas of Australia. I think this is a historical first and uh, we also uh, appreciate the offer of Australia to provide us with uh, space, with slots to send our cadets to the Australian Defence Forces Academy and to the Royal Military College at Dantroon. I think this is also a historical first. We will be, for the first time in the history of the relations between Indonesia and Australia, that we will send our young boys and girls to train and be educated in, in Australian military academies. So this is a very uh, historic moment. We also offer Australia uh, more uh, seats and more space in our courses in Indonesia, especially in to attend uh, Indonesian basic and intermediate language courses at Pus Bahasa. Uh, we also agree to enhance uh, more uh, exercises together in the near future. So I think uh, I also uh, offer uh, to brief the Australian uh, Defence Ministry uh, about Indonesian uh, uh, programs to enhance and bolster our defence posture uh, in the coming years. So uh, I commend Minister Retno and I thank the, our two distinguished visitors. I think this is important to uh, enhance our cooperation. Indonesia and Australia are important friends and partners in this region. We are close neighbours and we would like to be even closer friends. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Subianto. Now I would like to invite Minister Payne and then followed by Minister Dutton. Thank you very much. Uh, and to our good friends, Minister Masudi, Minister Provoo, thank you for your very kind words and for your warm welcome back to Jakarta. May I acknowledge the Indonesian and Australian media participating both here and, uh, and online. It is particularly special, if I may say, to be meeting here in the magnificent surrounds of Gerung Pancasila and sends a very strong message uh, for us uh, about uh, Indonesia's history uh, and um, the very special relationship by hosting us here. We do appreciate your hospitality, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to thank our officials on both sides because it is not easy uh, to bring about a two plus two in the current environment uh, on both sides, but particularly our Indonesian hosts. Uh, to you and your team, Minister Masudi, thank you uh, very much. This is uh, Minister Masudi's and my fifth Australia-Indonesia 2 plus 2 of the seven that have occurred. Since we last met in Bali just before the pandemic, uh, our countries have experienced extraordinary times. And could I say how much I have valued uh, our close engagement, Minister, over this period as we've discussed the impact of COVID-19 in the Indo-Pacific and on both our countries, and how we can chart a path forward cooperatively to the economic recovery period for which we are both uh, very optimistic. As close friends and neighbours, as comprehensive strategic partners, Australia is committed to working with Indonesia in overcoming the shared challenges of COVID-19 throughout the Indo-Pacific region that we share. Our work is done in close partnership with Indonesia. And of course, in line with the priorities set by Indonesia's COVID-19 and National Economic Recovery Committee and in its National Medium-Term Development Plan. 
That includes through our partnership the sharing of a million AstraZeneca doses with Indonesia following the delivery of a second 500,000 doses yesterday. These, along with Australian support for vaccine procurement, will ensure around 13 million doses are delivered to Indonesia ultimately. And through an over $12 million commitment, we will work with a range of non-government organisations, with UN agencies, community organisations and provincial governments as they continue their response to COVID-19 with a partnership focus on supporting the needs of local communities and health systems. During a, time, a crisis in which the timeliness of support is crucial, we have been able to rapidly deliver and work together uh, on these issues following uh, our conversation, uh, Minister Masudi, in early July. Colleagues, during the talks today and during my uh, earlier bilateral meeting with the Foreign Minister, we reviewed progress under the Australia-Indonesia Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. The partnership, which is consistent with the principles of the 2006 Lombok Treaty, is the guiding framework for our relationship. During President Widodo's visit to Australia in February 2020, our leaders reflected on the strong progress we had made under this partnership. We reviewed a scorecard on progress under the partnership's five pillars that will be provided to leaders ahead of their next annual meeting. Also under the partnership, we particularly share a commitment to gender equality. We recognise that women's decision making and leadership is critical to effective COVID-19 response and recovery efforts. And I am pleased to be discussing these important matters with my counterpart and friend, Minister Retno Masudi, a real leader uh, amongst uh, women in Indonesia, but also globally. And to be accompanied today by Australia's first female ambassador to Indonesia, Her Excellency Penny Williams, and the Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Secretary Catherine Campbell. Today we also discussed Afghanistan and the need for the Taliban-led regime to respect the rights of women and girls. Indonesia has a significant role to play as a Muslim country with a strong voice on these issues. We discussed our defence and strategic partnership, including our cooperation on counter-terrorism and cyber, and Minister Dutton will have more to say about uh, these topics. I am pleased that we have endorsed two updated uh, memoranda of understanding, refreshing our counter-terrorism MOU and expanding our cyber MOU to include emerging cyber technologies. Australia wants to see an Indo-Pacific region that embraces engagement and cooperation that upholds the rights and sovereignty of countries without coercion, regardless of their size and power. We therefore discuss today the Indo-Pacific region, the most dynamic, innovative and prosperous region in the world. To maintain that prosperity and security, we welcome a region that supports a level playing field based on rules and norms to ensure healthy competition rather than competition that risks sliding into instability or conflict. And Australia and Indonesia are well placed to cooperate on this vision. Immediately before today's meeting, Minister Masuni and I signed an MOU that reaffirms Australia's and Indonesia's commitment to develop trilateral cooperation between our two countries and Pacific Island nations to further support the development and economic prosperity of the region, including related to COVID-19 recovery. This could include disaster risk management and humanitarian response, climate change and environment, sustainable and inclusive economic growth, women and children's rights, health security, fisheries, agriculture and small and medium enterprises. We have also discussed today the central role of ASEAN and Indonesia's role as a leader in ASEAN, particularly on the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific and on ASEAN's response to the Myanmar crisis. We are both strong supporters of ASEAN Special Envoy Dato Erawan of Brunei and the work that he will undertake. Our meeting today, such a pleasure to have the meeting in person, has been an important opportunity to reflect on the progress we've made in drawing our countries ever closer together. I want to thank you both again, Ministers Masudi and Prabowo, for your very kind welcome back to Indonesia and for your very productive engagement in our discussions this morning. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, no, good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for being here today. Uh, I too want to start by saying thank you very much uh, to our good friends, uh, to Minister Masudi and to Minister 
Prabhu, thank you very much for the warm welcome and for the very constructive engagement and the way in which we've been able to converse and to agree on matters of mutual interest to us has been very important. Uh, well, Maurice and I are travelling uh, to several countries uh, on this trip, but we were always going to make Indonesia our first port of call. And I'm very pleased to be back uh, in this wonderful country. Our nations are age-old, natural uh, neighbours and good friends, and our respect mutually and our engagement uh, uh, is at an all-time high. After World War II, Australia championed Indonesia's independence, and since then, and indeed for more than 75 years, our partnership has grown more robust. The ties between our citizens have become tighter. We've helped each other in times of crises, from tsunamis and bushfires to cyclones and now pandemics. And I want to again express my condolences to the families of the submariners of KRI Nangala 402. I know the Australian servicemen and women who supported Indonesia's ultimately tragic search for the missing submarine were absolutely heartbroken. We are nations united by our people, by our democracy, our geography and our history. And our relationship is essential and enduring. When President Widodo visited Australia in February last year, he said, in the midst of enormous challenges, Indonesia and Australia must focus on strengthening our partnership. Indonesia and Australia must become the anchors for cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region. And that's exactly what we have been doing during this two plus two ministers meeting. In an increasingly contested region, we've been boosting our comprehensive strategic partnership. We've been bolstering our security cooperation, which is enshrined in the 2006 Lombok Treaty. We are building on our defence cooperation arrangement, which was first signed in 2012. And indeed, Minister Prabowo and I have today signed a renewed arrangement, as he pointed out before. It will deepen our forces' interoperability and enhance our cooperation. And of course, our navies regularly exercise together already, but there will be more that they can do together. Indonesian officials seized during exercise crocodile response in May of this year. And as recently as July, military officers from Indonesia observed exercise talisman sabre Australia's largest military exercise with the United States. Our renewed defence cooperation arrangement will see Australia and Indonesia step up our training initiatives, our joint training initiatives and defence operational activities over the coming years. We've also agreed to grow our defence education programs. I look forward very much to hosting the cadets from the Indonesian National Armed Forces studying at Australian defence educational facilities building relationships among future leaders on both sides. Already 35 Indonesian officers, students and their families are in Australia undertaking long-term studies there at our defence colleges. In terms of cyber security cooperation, 16 Indonesian defence officials have completed training in Australia. And I'm pleased to announce that 15 Bushmaster protected military vehicles to Indonesia to support its peacekeeping operations. These four-wheel drives carry up to nine infantry officers. They're armoured. They provide protection from explosive devices and from small arms fire. And they can be used for a wide variety of missions. So with both our nations still contending with the pandemic, Australia does stand ready to provide further assistance in whatever way we can in relation to the response to COVID-19 and in our support of the Indonesian National Armed Forces. Australia is proud to have supported the TNI with two shipments of personal protective equipment and testing kits. And Australia and Indonesia are committed to ensuring our region remains safe and secure, peaceful and prosperous. We will continue to work with other partners in Southeast Asia, building on our existing and excellent relationships. And in so doing, supporting ASEAN centrality in our regional security architecture and the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. As anchors for cooperation in the Indo-Pacific, 
Australia and Indonesia will and must continue working together. Working together and working with others to help bring certainty and stability for our region. I want to say thank you again to our host today. Uh, the hospitality has been exceptional. Uh, I do feel that we're sincerely with uh, wonderful friends and I look forward to the next visit to Indonesia and indeed I look forward to welcoming our ministerial hosts uh, to Australia at some time in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Teman-teman, terima kasih. Colleagues, thank you very, very much.